Taylor Allison Swift is an American singer-songwriter. One of the most popular contemporary female recording artists, she is known for narrative songs about her personal life, which has received much media attention. Born and raised in Pennsylvania, Swift moved to Nashville, Tennessee at age 14 to pursue a career in country music. She signed with the independent label Big Machine Records and became the youngest artist ever signed by the Sony ATV Music Publishing House. Her eponymous debut album in 2006 peaked at number 5 on Billboard 200 and spent the most weeks on the chart in the 2000s. The album's third single, Our Song, made her the youngest person to single-handedly write and perform a number one song on the Hot Country Songs chart. Swift's second album, Fearless, was released in 2008. Buoyed by the pop crossover success of the singles Love Story and You Belong With Me, Fearless became the best-selling album of 2009 in the United States. The album won four Grammy Awards, with Swift becoming the youngest album of the year winner. In 2009, Swift appeared in the late-night show Saturday Night Live followed by her film debut the following year in Valentine's Day. Swift was the sole writer of her 2010 album, Speak Now. It debuted at number one in the United States and the single Mean won two Grammy Awards. Her fourth album, Red, 2012, yielded the successful singles We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together and I Knew You Were Trouble. With her fifth album, the pop-focused 1989-2014, she became the first act to have three albums sell a million copies within one week in the United States. Its singles Shake It Off, Blank Space and Bad Blood reached number one in the US, Australia and Canada. The album received three Grammy Awards, and Swift became the first woman and fifth act overall to win Album of the Year twice. The 2015 eponymous concert tour for 1989 became one of highest grossing of all time. As a songwriter, Swift has received awards from the Nashville Songwriters Association and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. She is also the recipient of 10 Grammy Awards, 5 Guinness World Records, 1 Emmy Award, 23 Billboard Music Awards, 11 Country Music Association Awards, 8 Academy of Country Music Awards, and 1 Brit Award. Swift is one of the best-selling artists of all time, having sold more than 40 million albums including 27.1 million in the US and 130 million single downloads. She has appeared in Time 100 Most Influential People in the World, 2010 and 2015. Forbes Top Earning Women in Music, 2011-2015, Forbes 100 Most Powerful Women, 2015, and Forbes Celebrity 100, 2016. She was the youngest woman to be included in the third of these and ranked first in Celebrity 100. Biography 1989-2003, Early Life Swift was born on December 13, 1989, in Reading, Pennsylvania. Her father, Scott Kingsley Swift, was a financial advisor, and her mother, Andrea Gardner Swift, Nathan Lai, was a homemaker who worked previously as a mutual fund marketing executive. She has a younger brother named Austin. Swift spent the early years of her life on a Christmas tree farm in Cumru Township, Pennsylvania. She attended preschool and kindergarten at the Alvernia Montessori School run by Franciscan nuns, before transferring to the Windcroft School. The family then moved to a rented house in the suburban town of Wyoming, Pennsylvania, where she attended Wyoming Area Junior Senior High School. At the age of nine, Swift became interested in musical theater and performed in Four Barks Youth Theater Academy productions. She also traveled regularly to New York City for vocal and acting lessons. Swift later shifted her focus toward country music inspired by Shania Twain's songs, which made her want to just run around the block four times and daydream about everything. She spent her weekends performing at local festivals and events. After watching a documentary about Faith Hill, Swift felt sure that she needed to go to Nashville, Tennessee, to pursue a music career. At the age of 11, she traveled with her mother to visit Nashville record labels and submitted a demo tape of Dolly Parton and Dixie Chicks karaoke covers. However, 
she was rejected since everyone in that town wanted to do what I wanted to do. So, I kept thinking to myself, I need to figure out a way to be different. When Swift was about 12 years old, a computer repairman taught her how to play three chords on a guitar, leading to her first effort as a songwriter, Lucky You. In 2003, Swift and her parents started working with New York-based music manager Dan Dimtro. With his help, Swift modeled for Abercrombie and Fitch as part of their Rising Stars campaign, had an original song included on a Maybelline compilation CD, and attended meetings with major record labels. After performing original songs at an RCA Records showcase, Swift was given an artist development deal and began making frequent trips to Nashville with her mother. To help Swift break into country music, her father transferred to the Nashville office of Merrill Lynch when she was 14, and the family relocated to a lakefront house in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Swift attended public high school, but after two years transferred to the Aaron Academy, which through homeschooling could accommodate her touring schedule, and she graduated a year early. 2004-2008, Career Beginnings and Taylor Swift In Nashville, Swift worked with experienced music row songwriters such as Troy Verges, Brett Beavers, Brett James, Mac McAnally, and the Warren Brothers. She eventually formed a lasting working relationship with Liz Rose. They began meeting for two-hour writing sessions every Tuesday afternoon after school. Rose thought that the sessions were some of the easiest I've ever done. Basically, I was just her editor. She'd write about what happened in school that day. She had such a clear vision of what she was trying to say. And she'd come in with the most incredible hooks. Swift was signed by the Sony ATV Tree Publishing House, but left RCA Records when she was 14. She later recalled, I genuinely felt that I was running out of time. I wanted to capture these years of my life on an album while they still represented what I was going through. At an industry showcase at Nashville's Bluebird Cafe in 2005, Swift caught the attention of Scott Borchetta, a DreamWorks Records executive who was preparing to form his own independent record label, Big Machine Records. She became one of the first signings, and her father purchased a 3% stake in the fledgling company at an estimated cost of $120,000. The singer began working on her eponymous debut album shortly after signing the record deal. She persuaded Big Machine to hire her demo producer Nathan Chapman, with whom she felt she had the right chemistry. Swift wrote three of the album's songs alone, and Co wrote the remaining eight with writers Rose, Robert Ellis Oral, Brian Marr, and Angelo Petroglia. Taylor Swift was released on October 24, 2006. John Karamanica of The New York Times described it as a small masterpiece of pop-minded country, both wide-eyed and cynical held together by Ms. Swift's firm, pleading voice. Taylor Swift peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200 and spent 157 weeks on the chart, marking the longest stay by any release in the 2000s. As of August 2016 the album has sold over 7.75 million copies worldwide. Big Machine Records was still in its infancy on the release of the lead single, Tim McGraw, in June 2006 and Swift and her mother helped stuff the CD singles into envelopes to send to radio. She spent much of 2006 promoting Taylor Swift with a radio tour and television appearances. Borchetta has said that record industry peers disliked his signing of a 16-year-old singer-songwriter at first but that Swift tapped into a previously unknown market teenage girls who listened to country music. Following Tim McGraw, four more singles were released throughout 2007 and 2008, Teardrops on My Guitar, Our Song, Picture to Burn and Should Have Said No. All were highly successful on Billboard Hot Country Songs chart, with Our Song and Should Have Said No both reaching number one. For the former, Swift became the youngest person to single-handedly write and perform a number one song on the chart. Teardrops on My Guitar became a moderate commercial success, reaching number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. Swift also released the holiday album Sounds of the Season, the Taylor Swift Holiday Collection in October 2007 and the EP Beautiful Eyes in July 2008. She promoted her debut album extensively as the opening act for other artists on their tours. 
Swift won accolades for Taylor Swift. She was one of the recipients of the Nashville Songwriters Association's Songwriter Artist of the Year in 2007, becoming the youngest person to be honored with the title. She also won the Country Music Association's Horizon Award for Best New Artist, the Academy of Country Music Awards Top New Female Vocalist, and the American Music Awards Favorite Country Female Artist Honor. She was also nominated for Best New Artist at the 2008 Grammy Awards. In July of that year, Swift began a romance with Joe Jonas that ended three months later. 2008-2010, Fearless in Acting Swift's second studio album, Fearless, was released on November 11, 2008. The lead single, Love Story, was released in September 2008. It peaked at number 4 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number 1 in Australia. Four more singles were released throughout 2008 and 2009, White Horse, You Belong With Me, 15 and Fearless. You Belong With Me was the album's highest charting single on the Billboard Hot 100, peaking at number 2. The album debuted at number 1 on Billboard 200 and was the top-selling album of 2009 in the United States. The album received promotion from Swift's first concert tour, Fearless Tour, which grossed over $63 million. Taylor Swift, Journey to Fearless, a concert film, was aired on television and later released on DVD and Blu-ray. Swift also performed as a supporting act for Keith Urban's Escape Together World Tour. In 2009, the music video for You Belong With Me was named MTV Video Music Award for Best Female Video. Her acceptance speech was interrupted by rapper Kanye West. The incident was the subject of controversy and frequent media attention, resulting in many internet memes. James Montgomery of MTV argued that the incident and subsequent media attention turned Swift into a bona fide mainstream celebrity. Also that year, she won five American Music Awards, including Artist of the Year and Favorite Country Album. Billboard named her 2009's Artist of the Year. Swift also won accolades for Fearless in 2010. At the 52nd Grammy Awards, Fearless was named Album of the Year and Best Country Album, and White Horse was named Best Country Song and Best Female Country Vocal Performance. Swift was the youngest artist ever to win Album of the Year. During the ceremony, Swift sang You Belong With Me and Rhiannon with Stevie Nicks. Her vocal performance received negative reviews and a media backlash. John Karamanica of The New York Times found it refreshing to see someone so gifted make the occasional flub and described Swift as the most important new pop star of the past few years. Swift became the youngest ever artist to be named Entertainer of the Year by the Country Music Association. Fearless also won the Association's Album of the Year Award. Swift contributed backing vocals to John Mayer's Half of My Heart a single featured on his fourth album, Battle Studies, 2009. She co wrote and recorded Best Days of Your Life with Kelly Pickler, and co wrote two songs for the Hannah Montana, the movie soundtrack You'll Always Find Your Way Back Home and Crazier. Swift also provided vocals for Boys Like Girls 2 is Better Than One. She contributed two songs to the Valentine's Day soundtrack, including Today Was a Fairy Tale which became her first number one on the Canadian Hot 100 chart. Swift made her acting debut in a 2009 episode of CBS's CSI, Crime Scene Investigation, playing a rebellious teenager. The New York Times noted that the character allowed Swift to be a little bit naughty, incredibly so. Later that year, Swift both hosted and performed as the musical guest for an episode of Saturday Night Live. Entertainment Weekly described her as this season's best Saturday Night Live host so far, noting that she was always up for the challenge, seemed to be having fun, and helped the rest of the cast nail the punchlines. While filming Valentine's Day in October 2009 Swift's feature film acting debut she began a romantic relationship with CO star Taylor Lautner, however, they broke up later that year. The romantic comedy, released the following year, saw her play the ditzy girlfriend of a high school jock, a role in which Los Angeles Times found serious comedic potential. In a particularly scathing review, the critic for Variety deemed her entirely undirected, 
arguing that she needs to find a skilled director to tamp her down and channel her obviously abundant energy. Later in 2010, she briefly dated actor Jake Gyllenhaal. 2010-2014, Speak Now and Read In August 2010, Swift released Mine, which entered the United States at number 3, making Swift the second female artist in the history of the Hot 100, after Mariah Carey, to debut multiple tracks the other one was Today was a fairytale at number 2 in the top 5 during a calendar year. The song was the lead single from her third studio album, Speak Now, whose songs she wrote by herself. Speak Now, released on October 25, 2010 was a commercial success, debuting at number 1 on the Billboard 200, with opening week sales of 1 million copies, the 16th album to do so. Later, it became the fastest-selling digital album by a female artist, with 278,000 downloads in a week. For this feat, Swift received a listing in the 2010 Guinness World Records, she earned another entry in the book after 10 of Speak Now's tracks debuted on the Billboard Hot 100, making her the first female to achieve the feat. Three of the album's singles Mine, Back to December, and Mean peaked within the top 10 in Canada. The song Mean won Best Country Song and Best Country Solo Performance at the 54th Annual Grammy Awards. She performed the song during the ceremony. Claire Suddeth of Time felt she delivered her comeback on key and with a vengeance, and Jamie Deerwester of USA Today remarked that the criticism in 2010 seemed to have made her a better songwriter and live performer. Swift won various other awards for Speak Now, including Songwriter Artist of the Year by the Nashville Songwriters Association, 2010 and 2011, Woman of the Year by Billboard. 2011, and Entertainer of the Year by the Academy of Country Music, 2011 and 2012, and the Country Music Association in 2011. At the American Music Awards of 2011, Swift won Artist of the Year and Favorite Country Album. Swift embarked on the Speak Now World Tour, which ran from February 2011 to March 2012, and grossed over $123 million. In November 2011, she released her first live album, Speak Now World Tour, Live. The following month, Swift contributed two original songs to the Hunger Games soundtrack album Safe and Sound, CO Written and Recorded with the Civil Wars and T-Bone Burnett, and Eyes Open. The former was awarded the Grammy Award for Best Song Written for Visual Media. After providing vocals for B.O.B's Both of Us in May 2012, Swift dated political heir Connor Kennedy from July to September 2012. In August, Swift released We Are Never Ever Getting Back Together the lead single from her fourth studio album, Red. An international success, it became her first number one in the US and New Zealand. The song reached the top slot on an iTunes chart 50 minutes after its release, earning the fastest-selling single in digital history listing in the Guinness World Records. Swift released the album's second single Begin Again in October. It reached number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100. Other singles released from the album included, I Knew You Were Trouble, 22, Everything Has Changed, The Last Time, and Red. I Knew You Were Trouble was a major commercial success, peaking at number 2 in the United States. Red was released on October 22, 2012 incorporating new genres, such as Heartland Rock, Dubstep, and Dance Pop. The album was a critical and commercial success and debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 with first week sales of 1.21 million copies. This marked the highest opening sales in a decade, and made Swift the first female to have two million selling album openings, a record recognized by Guinness World Records. Promoting the album, Swift embarked on the Red Tour which ran from March 2013 to June 2014 and grossed over $150 million. Red earned several accolades, including four nominations at the 56th Annual Grammy Awards. Its single I Knew You Were Trouble won Best Female Video at the 2013 MTV Video Music Awards.
Swift was named Best Female Country Artist at the 2012 American Music Awards and Artist of the Year at the 2013 ceremony. She received the Nashville Songwriters Association's Songwriter Artist Award for the fifth and sixth consecutive years in 2012 and 2013, respectively. Swift was also honored by the association with a special Pinnacle Award, making her the second recipient of the accolade after Garth Brooks. In 2013, Swift CO wrote Sweeter Than Fiction with Jack Antonoff for the One Chance soundtrack, and received a Best Original Song nomination at the 71st Golden Globe Awards. She provided guest vocals for a McGraw song titled Highway Don't Care, featuring guitar work by Urban. Swift performed as Tears Go By with the Rolling Stones in Chicago as part of their 50 and Counting tour. She also joined Florida Georgia Line on stage during their set at the 2013 Country Radio Seminar to sing Cruz. Outside of music, Swift voiced Audrey, a tree lover, in the animated film The Lorax, 2012, made a cameo in the sitcom New Girl, 2013, and had a supporting role in the film Adaptation of the Giver, 2014. She dated British singer Harry Styles from December 2012 to January 2013. 2014 present, 1989. In March 2014, Swift relocated to New York City. Around this time, she was working on her fifth studio album, 1989 with writers Antonoff, Martin, Shellback, Imogen Heap, Ryan Tedder, and Ali Payami. She promoted the album through various campaigns, including inviting fans to secret album listening sessions, called the 1989 Secret Sessions. Credited as her first documented, official pop album, it marks a departure from her previous country albums. The album was released on October 27, 2014 to positive reviews. 1989 sold 1.28 million copies in the U.S. during the first week of release and debuted it atop the Billboard 200. This made Swift the first act to have three albums sell more than 1 million copies in their opening release week, for which she earned a Guinness World Record. As of February 2015, 1989 had sold over 8.6 million copies worldwide. The album's lead single, Shake It Off, was released in August 2014 and debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Others included two number one singles Blank Space and Bad Blood, featuring Kendrick Lamar, as well as the top ten entries Style and Wildest Dreams, and the singles Out of the Woods and New Romantics. Shake It Off, Blank Space, and Bad Blood also topped the charts in Australia and Canada. He music video for Blank Space briefly became the fastest video to reach 1 billion views on Vivo. Blank Space and the video for Bad Blood won four accolades at the 2015 MTV Video Music Awards, with the latter winning for Video of the Year and Best Collaboration. Swift's headlining tour, the 1989 World Tour, running from May to December 2015, grossed over $250 million, and became one of the highest-grossing tours of all time. Swift was named Billboard's Woman of the Year in 2014, becoming the first artist to win the award twice. Also that year, she received the Dick Clark Award for Excellence at the American Music Awards. In 2015, Shake It Off was nominated for three Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year and Song of the Year and Swift won the Brit Award for International Female Solo Artist. The singer was one of eight artists to receive a 50th Anniversary Milestone Award at the 2015 Academy of Country Music Awards. In 2016, Swift won three Grammy Awards for 1989 Album of the Year, Best Pop Vocal Album, and Best Music Video for Bad Blood. She became the first woman and fifth act overall, to win the first of these twice. Prior to 1989's release, Swift stressed the importance of albums to artists and fans. In November 2014, she removed her entire catalog from Spotify, arguing that the streaming company's ad-supported, free service undermined the premium service, which provides higher royalties for songwriters. In June 2015, 
Swift criticized Apple Music in an open letter for not offering royalties to artists during the streaming service's free three-month trial period and stated that she would pull 1989 from the catalog. The following day, Apple announced that it would pay artists during the free trial period, and Swift agreed to stream 1989 on the streaming service. Swift's intellectual property rights management and holding company, TAS Rights Management, filed for 73 trademarks related to the singer and the 1989-era memes. In 2015, Swift performed I Saw Her Standing There and Shake It Off with Paul McCartney at the Saturday Night Live 40th Anniversary Special After Party, and joined Kenny Chesney to sing Big Star on the opening night of his big revival tour in Nashville. In March 2015, Swift started dating Scottish DJ and record producer Calvin Harris. By June 2015, the duo were ranked as the highest-paid celebrity couple over the past year by Forbes with combined earnings of over $146 million. In August, Swift addressed her mother's cancer diagnosis, and encouraged others to get a medical checkup. Before Swift and Harris announced the end of their relationship in June 2016, the two CEO wrote his song This Is What You Came For, for which she was initially credited under the pseudonym Nils Schoberg. In October, she penned Little Big Town's Better Man for their seventh album, The Breaker. Two months later, Swift and Zayn Malik released a single together called I Don't Wanna Live Forever, for the soundtrack of the film Fifty Shades Darker, 2017, which reached number one in Sweden. Artistry Influences one of Swift's earliest musical memories is listening to her maternal grandmother, Marjorie Finlay, sing at church. As a child, she enjoyed Disney film soundtracks. My parents noticed that, once I had run out of words, I would just make up my own. Swift has said she owes her confidence to her mother, who helped her prepare for class presentations as a child. She also attributes her fascination with writing and storytelling to her mother. Swift was drawn to the storytelling of country music, and was introduced to the genre by the great female country artists of the 90s Shania Twain, Faith Hill, and the Dixie Chicks. Twain, both as a songwriter and performer, was her biggest musical influence. Hill was Swift's childhood role model, everything she said, did, wore, I tried to copy it. She admired the Dixie Chicks' defiant attitude and their ability to play their own instruments. The band's Cowboy Take Me Away was the first song Swift learned to play on the guitar. Swift also explored the music of older country stars, including Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn, Dolly Parton, and Tammy Wynette. She believes Parton is an amazing example to every female songwriter out there. All country artists such as Ryan Adams, Patty Griffin, and Laurie McKenna have inspired Swift. Swift lists Paul McCartney, Bruce Springsteen, Emmy Lou Harris, Chris Christopherson, and Carly Simon as her career role models, they've taken chances, but they've also been the same artist for their entire careers. McCartney, both as a Beatle and a solo artist, makes Swift feel as if I've been let into his heart and his mind. Any musician could only dream of a legacy like that. She admires Springsteen for being so musically relevant after such a long period of time. She aspires to be like Harris as she grows older, it's not about fame for her, it's about music. Christofferson shines in songwriter. He's just one of those people who has been in this business for years but you can tell it hasn't chewed him up and spat him out, Swift says. She admires Simon's songwriter and honesty. She's known as an emotional person but a strong person. Swift has also been influenced by many artists outside the country genre. As a preteen, she enjoyed bubblegum pop acts including Hanson and Britney Spears, Swift has said she has unwavering devotion for Spears. In her high school years, Swift listened to rock bands such as Dashboard Confessional, Fall Out Boy, and Jimmy Eat World. She has also spoken fondly of singers and songwriters like Michelle Branch Alanis Morissette, Ashley Simpson, Fief Dobson and Justin Timberlake and the 1960s acts like the Shirelles, Doris Troy, and the Beach Boys. Swift's fifth album, the pop-focused 1989 was influenced by some of her favorite 1980s pop acts, including Annie Lennox, Phil Collins, and Like a Prayer era Madonna. Musical Style 
Swift's music contains elements of pop, pop rock, and country. She self-identified as a country artist until the 2014 release of 1989 which she described as a sonically cohesive pop album. Rolling Stone asserted, Swift might get played on the country station, but she's one of the few genuine rock stars we've got these days. The New York Times noted, there isn't much in Ms. Swift's music to indicate country a few banjo strums, a pair of cowboy boots worn on stage, a bedazzled guitar but there's something in her winsome, vulnerable delivery that's unique to Nashville. According to The Guardian, Swift cranks melodies out with the pitiless efficiency of a Scandinavian pop factory. Swift's vocals have been described by Sophie Shalassi from The Hollywood Reporter as sweet, but soft. In studio recordings, The Los Angeles Times identified Swift's defining vocal gesture as the line that slides down like a contented sigh or up like a raised eyebrow, giving her beloved girl time hits their air of easy intimacy. Rolling Stone, in a Speak Now review, remarked, Swift's voice is unaffected enough to mask how masterful she has become as a singer. She lowers her voice for the payoff lines in the classic mode of a shy girl trying to talk tough. In another review of Speak Now, the Village Voice noted that her phrasing was previously bland and muddled, but that's changed. She can still sound strained and thin, and often strays into a pitch that drives some people crazy, but she's learned how to make words sound like what they mean. The Hollywood Reporter opines that her live vocals are fine but they do not match those of her peers. In 2009, they were also described as flat, thin, and sometimes as wobbly as a newborn colt. However, Swift has received praise for refusing to correct her pitch with auto-tune. In an interview with The New Yorker, Swift characterized herself primarily as a songwriter, I write songs, and my voice is just a way to get those lyrics across. A writer for The Tennessean conceded in 2010 that Swift is not the best technical singer, but described her as the best communicator that we've got. Swift's vocal presence is something that concerns her and she has put a lot of work into improving it. It was reported in 2010 that she continues to take vocal lessons. She has said that she only feels nervous performing if I'm not sure what the audience thinks of me, like at award shows. Songwriter Swift uses her life experiences as an inspiration in her work. In her songs, Swift often addresses the anonymous crushes of her high school years and celebrities. Swift frequently criticizes ex-boyfriends, an aspect of her songwriter downplayed by the village voice, being told what songs mean is like having a really pushy professor. And it imperils a true appreciation of Swift's talent, which is not confessional, but dramatic. However, New York believes the media scrutiny over her decision to mine her personal life for music, is sexist, inasmuch as it's not asked of her male peers. The singer herself has said that not all her songs are factual and that they are sometimes based on observations. Aside from her liner note clues, Swift tries not to talk about song subjects specifically because these are real people. You try to give insight as to where you were coming from as a writer without completely throwing somebody under the bus. The Guardian has praised Swift for writing about teenage years with a kind of wistful, sepia-toned nostalgia over the course of her first two albums New York has remarked that many singer-songwriters have made great records as teens, but none made great records so explicitly about their teens. The magazine has also compared her work to Brian Wilson. In Fearless, Swift featured fairy tale imagery and explored the disconnect between fairy tales and the reality of love. Her later albums address more adult relationships. In addition to romance and love, Swift's songs have discussed parent child relationships, friendships, alienation, fame, and career ambitions. Swift frequently includes a tossed off phrase to suggest large and serious things that won't fit in the song, things that enhance or subvert the surface narrative. Rolling Stone describes Swift as a songwriter savant with an intuitive gift for verse chorus bridge architecture. According to The Village Voice, she uses third-verse point-of-view reversals frequently. In terms of imagery, repetition is evident in Swift's songwriter. In The Guardian's words, she spends so much time kissing in the rain that it seems a miracle she hasn't developed trench foot. Slant magazine adds, to Swift's credit, 
she explores new lyrical motifs over the course of her fourth album. Although reviews of Swift's work are almost uniformly positive, The New Yorker has said she is generally portrayed more as a skilled technician than as a Dylan-esque visionary. Public Image Swift's personal life is the subject of constant media attention. In 2013, Abercrombie and Fitch marketed a slogan t-shirt with a slut-shaming remark directed toward her. The New York Times asserted that her dating history has begun to stir what feels like the beginning of a backlash and questioned whether Swift was in the midst of a quarter-life crisis. Swift has said that she is unwilling to discuss her personal life in public as she believes that talking about it can be a career weakness. Rolling Stone remarks upon her polite manner, if this is Swift's game face, it must be tattooed on because it never drops. The magazine also takes note of her ease with glad handing and The Hollywood Reporter credits her as the best people person since Bill Clinton. While presenting Swift an award for her humanitarian endeavors in 2012, Michelle Obama described her as a singer who has rocketed to the top of the music industry but still keeps her feet on the ground, someone who has shattered every expectation of what a 22-year-old can accomplish. Swift considers Obama to be a role model. Swift is one of the most followed people on social media, and is known for her friendly interactions with her fans. She has delivered holiday gifts to fans by mail and in person, dubbed Swift Maze. She considers it her responsibility to be conscious of her influence on young fans, and has said that her fans are the longest and best relationship I have ever had. Often described by the media as America's sweetheart, Swift insists that I don't live by all these rigid, weird rules that make me feel all fenced in. I just like the way that I feel like, and that makes me feel very free. She does not drink alcohol, fearing that she might lose control. She refuses to take part in overly sexualized photoshoots, although Bloomberg LP views her as a sex symbol. Swift was named an icon of American style by Vogue in 2011. In 2014 she topped People Annual Best Dressed list. In 2015, she was named Woman of the Year at the L Style Awards, and ranked first in Maxim Hot 100 list. Swift has also appeared in various power listings. Due to her success and earnings, she was included in Time's annual list of the 100 most influential people in 2010 and 2015. From 2011-15, she appeared in the top three of Forbes' top earning women in music with earnings of $45 million, $57 million, $55 million, $64 million and $80 million respectively. In 2015, she became the youngest woman ever to be included on Forbes' 100 Most Powerful Women list, ranked at number 64. In 2016, Swift topped Forbes' annual list of the 100 highest paid celebrities with $170 million. She also ranked among the top 10 in 2011, 2013 and 2015. In June 2016, Forbes estimated Swift's net worth to be $250 million. Other Ventures Philanthropy Swift's philanthropic efforts have been recognized by the Do Something Awards and the Tennessee Disaster Services. She has also received the Big Help Award for her dedication to helping others and inspiring others through action, and the Ripple of Hope Award because of her dedication to advocacy at such a young age, Taylor is just the kind of woman we want our daughters to be. In 2008, she donated $100,000 to the Red Cross to help the victims of the Iowa flood of 2008. The singer has performed in charity reliefs like Sydney's Sound Relief Concert. She also recorded a song for the Hope for Haiti Now album. In response to the May 2010 Tennessee floods, Swift donated $500,000 during a telethon hosted by WSMV. In 2011, Swift used a dress rehearsal of her Speak Now tour as a benefit concert for victims of recent tornadoes in the United States, raising more than $750,000. In 2012, Swift supported Architecture for Humanity's Restore the Shore MTV telethon in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. In 2016, she made donations to the Louisiana Flood Relief and Dolly Parton Fire Fund. 
Swift is a supporter of the arts and donated $75,000 to Nashville's Hendersonville High School in 2010 to help refurbish the school auditorium. In 2012, she pledged $4 million to fund the building of a new education center at the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum in Nashville. Also in 2012, Swift partnered with textbook rental company Chegg to donate $60,000 to the music departments of six U.S. colleges. Swift also promotes children's literacy. In 2009, she donated $250,000 to various schools around the country for improvement of education. Her other endeavors to promote literacy include donating 6,000 scholastic books to Reading Public Library, Pennsylvania, 14,000 books to Nashville Public Library, Tennessee, 2,000 scholastic books to the Reading Hospital Child Health Center's Early Literacy Program, and 25,000 books to New York City schools in 2015. In 2007, she launched a campaign to protect children from online predators, in partnership with the Tennessee Association of Chiefs of Police. In 2009, Swift recorded a Sound Matters public service announcement, PSA, to make listeners aware of the importance of listening responsibly to prevent hearing impairment. Swift has donated items for auction to several charities, including, the Elton John AIDS Foundation, the UNICEF TAP Project, Moosey Cares, and Feeding America. As a recipient of the Academy of Country Music's Entertainer of the Year in 2011, Swift donated $25,000 to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Tennessee. In 2012, Swift participated in the Stand Up to Cancer Telethon, performing Ronan, a song she wrote in memory of a four-year-old boy who died of neuroblastoma. The song was made available for digital download with all proceeds donated to cancer-related charities. In 2014, she donated $100,000 to the V Foundation for Cancer Research, and $50,000 to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. The singer made private visits to hospitals to meet with sick patients and to support them. Swift has encouraged young people to volunteer in their local communities as part of Global Youth Service Day. Politics During the 2008 presidential campaign, Swift promoted the Every Woman Counts campaign, aimed at engaging women in the political process, and was one of many country stars to record a PSA for the vote, for your, country campaign. She stated, I don't think it's my job to try and influence people which way they should vote. Following President Obama's inauguration, she told Rolling Stone that she supported the president, I've never seen this country so happy about a political decision in my entire time of being alive. I'm so glad this was my first election. In a 2012 interview, Swift remarked that in spite of keeping herself as educated and informed as possible, she does not discuss politics, fearing that it might influence other people. Swift has spent time with the Kennedy family and has spoken of her admiration for Ethel Kennedy. Swift is also a feminist. She has spoken out against LGBT discrimination. Following the 2008 murder of Larry King, she recorded a Coulson PSA to combat hate crimes. On the first anniversary of King's death, Swift told Seventeen that her parents taught her never to judge others based on whom they love, what color their skin is, or their religion. The music video for Swift's anti-bullying song Mean deals in part with homophobia in high schools, the video was nominated for an MTV VMA Social Activism Award in 2011. The New York Times believes she is part of a new wave of young, and mostly straight, women who are providing the soundtrack for a generation of gay fans coming to terms with their identity in a time of turbulent and confusing cultural messages. Product Endorsements While promoting her debut album, Swift appeared as the face of Verizon Wireless Mobile Music Campaign. In the Fearless era, she launched a LEI sundress range at Walmart, and designed American greetings cards and Jack's Pacific dolls. She became a spokesperson for the National Hockey Leagues, NHL, Nashville Predators and Sony Cybershot digital cameras. In the Speak Now era, she released a special edition of her album through Target. Swift became a cover girl spokesmodel, launched two Elizabeth Arden fragrances Wonderstruck and Wonderstruck Enchanted. While promoting her fourth album, Red, 
Swift offered exclusive album promotions through Target, Papa John's Pizza, and Walgreens. She became a spokesmodel for Diet Coke and Keds Sneakers, released her third Elizabeth Arden fragrance named Taylor by Taylor Swift, and continued her partnerships with Sony Electronics and American Greetings. Swift also partnered with the companies AirAsia and Qantas during the Red Tour. These acted as the official airlines for the Australian and Asian legs, and Cornetto sponsored the Asian leg of the tour. While promoting 1989 Swift had tie-ins with Subway, Keds, Target, and Diet Coke. In 2014, Swift released her fourth fragrance, Incredible Things. Awards and Achievements Swift has received many awards and honors, including 10 Grammy Awards, 19 American Music Awards, 23 Billboard Music Awards, 11 Country Music Association Awards, 8 Academy of Country Music Awards, 1 Brit Award and 1 Emmy. As a songwriter, she has been honored by the Nashville Songwriters Association and the Songwriters Hall of Fame. By the beginning of 2016, Swift had sold more than 40 million albums, 130 million single downloads and was one of the top five music artists with the highest worldwide digital sales. Swift's studio albums Taylor Swift, Fearless, Speak Now, Red, and 1989 have all sold over 4 million copies in the U.S.